Hello everyone, Moglin here. If you click this video, then you want to know the most efficient way to set up your outposts. In this video, we will cover requirements, listing everything you'll want ready to set up your industrial factory, setting up your first outposts. This is a little different than what other people have suggested to make it even more efficient overall. Setting up a super efficient transport system to get all your materials back to your factory. Setting up your factory. This will show you everything from storage to the most efficient way to produce all the manufactured components. Where to build all your farming outposts. I think I've compiled the shortest list of outposts to get you every single raw resource required to run your factory. An optional pocket outpost. This is in case you want any other materials. There are a total of 80 different raw, organic and inorganic materials in the resource section and 30 different manufactured components. I'll be walking through the most efficient way I could find to find the resources you need to be able to output the manufactured components from your outposts en masse. Once your outposts are set up, you'll be automatically farming the 28 raw inorganic and 7 raw organic resources you need, outputting every single machine component that might be used in a weapon mod, spacesuit mod or for any other reason such as a game update or an add-on for a mod. I've managed to reduce the amount of outposts you need to get every single one of these resources and cut to the chase, you just need 17 outposts. And when you're done with that, I'm going to show you how to get all these resources together in a single outpost, which is what you'll need to be crafting like a pro. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button during the video if you want to see more content like this. So this isn't going to be a beginner video. Anyone can get something out of this, but to do it yourself, you will need to level up and pass some basic requirements. There are three requirements that you'll need, starting with perks. You'll have to have spent some skill points on certain perks and level them up. You need to have done some research at the research lab to be able to make certain buildings inside your outpost. And finally, you will need to have some starting materials to get your first couple of outposts up and running. Firstly, the perks. Some are required to be able to even attempt this, whereas others are just suggestions to make the process a lot smoother. The perks that are needed are Outpost Engineering Rank 4 Rank 3 is needed to allow you to do the necessary research at the research lab to be able to build all the different buildings required for this to work. Rank 4 actually drops the cost to build these things in your outpost by 50%. Scanning Rank 4 Though it's technically possible to find the perfect spot to set up your outpost without having scanning leveled up, I would say it's near impossible to do every single one of these sweet spot outpost locations without having this leveled up so you can look down on the planet and pick the perfect place. Planet Habitation Rank 3 You'll be getting some of the rarest resources in the game if you follow my instructions and you can only find some of them in inhospitable planets. To build on these you'll need this perk. Also to build enough outposts you'll need this perk too. Botany 1 and Zoology 1 these are necessary to farm the organic resources from plants and creatures that you also need in manufacturing. Other perks I'd recommend, but are not necessary, are surveying ranks 1 to 4. This increases your range, which makes it easier to scan for things on the surface, but ultimately it's not strictly necessary. I have a pretty handy trick I'll show you later on in the video that can scan for farmable resources about the same distance as rank 4 surveying without spending a single point. Outpost Management Rank 4 This is recommended if you're going to put in all the effort to make these farming outposts. You'll receive double the reward with extractors producing twice as much. Also, Commerce is another unrelated perk that you might benefit from. You'll have so much stuff it makes sense to be able to sell it for top dollar. The next step is to make sure you have the required research finished on the research lab. Looking into the menu under Outpost Development you will need to have completed Manufacturing 1, 2 and 3 along with Horticulture 1 and Domestication 1. And lastly, here is a list of the resources to get started. It's a shopping list of materials that you might have already stockpiled. If not, farm them and craft them yourself. Alternatively, you can just head down into New Atlantis and buy them. I hope we have what you need. You can reset the shop's inventory by using the bench and waiting 24 hours. Leviathan 2, Hygens 3 and Zeta offer Yukai 1. These are where you will build your first outposts and eventually link them together. Combined with your starter shopping list, 
This will get you the iron, aluminium, copper, nickel, cobalt, tungsten, beryllium and lead needed to build storage, power and the ability to transfer these resources across systems. With each of these bases, there are some other resources available as well, some of which are the main reasons why these locations were chosen. So, when you set up your outposts, you're going to want to pick a specific spot on the world. This is where Scanning 4 comes in. This will show you where all resources are located, and only then will you be able to find the right spot on your planet to place your outpost. By clicking on the planet, you will see the biome above the land button. As the biomes change, so do the resources, but by picking a landing spot right on the edge, you will be able to find where one biome ends and the next begins. Following along the border, you should come to a place where all the basic and rare resources are available to fit into one outpost. Zeta of a Yukai 1, for example, gives you the iron and silver needed to set up automation for transporting resources, but also contains a terbium, which will be used to fabricate the unique tier Veril treated manifold component. Hygiene's 3 will be where you get your epic tier lubricant, an organic material that can be farmed from the life forms of the planet. Leviathan 2 has the epic tier Europium available, which you will want to make sure appears in your outpost to extract as well as helium-3, which will be necessary to power your whole resource shipping operation. It also has the very important basic resources, aluminium and beryllium. Okay, here's the little trick I mentioned earlier. You can skip the surveying perk upgrade for searching for excavation resources due to this unique feature placing an outpost beacon has. When selecting a spot to place your outpost, you will hold a beacon to be placed in the center of your outpost. You are able to hold it out very far away from you by looking slightly into the sky. It will be at its furthest range while snapping to the floor over obstacles. In the top left, it will show you the resources available to excavate in your outpost if it was placed. This not only reaches as far as the surveyor, but also reaches out as far as the outpost borders would be. To highlight resources within its diameter that would have been outside the visual range of your surveyor. Now that you have your beacon down, this is my basic setup for any farming outpost that's not your main hub. First, I place a single basic extractor on each type of resource. Then we need to power them. Each extractor costs five power and the solar arrays provide varying amounts of power depending on the planet. So you will just need to make enough of them to make sure this power requirement is met. Now I place down two inter-system cargo links with a gas storage placed between them. Connect it to the cargo link's incoming storage to store the helium free coming from your main base. Then connect it to both cargo link's power supplies to allow it to send resources back along the chain. Finally, connect it to the outgoing container on the second cargo link to send the helium free to the next outpost. This is now set up to be powered by sending helium free from the main outpost in the opposite direction we are sending the resources. The cargo link can only make one connection so you'll need two at each outpost other than your main to create a daisy chain system. The first cargo link on Hygiene's free should show helium free ready to send. You will want to drop in some helium free into the gas storage on each outpost after the ship arrives for it to make its return journey. As you make each outpost, you'll need to collect up the resources it generates before moving on to the next. Hygiene's 2A and Firm E7A are the next important farming outposts to make, providing you with a source of nickel and cobalt to build inter-system transports without the need for any more external shopping list resources. Next, we have a central hub, a place where all your resources end up. You'll need to be able to store your resources away, process them through fabrication and have a crafting area to use them. This base can be made either on Leviathan 2 where you already have access to Helium 3 or you can make another outpost on any planet of your choice that has Helium 3 and just connect it to the start of the daisy chain. I chose to edit my Leviathan 2 base. Here is a time-lapse video of me building the storage walls, the fabrication factory and the crafting area in this outpost with certain parts slowed down to explain. The stacking and removal of storage allows for high foundations, providing a source of protection from random raiders. The storage system allows you to connect multiple of the same type of storage together. This can be used to feed your fabricators by connecting the last storage in the chain. It doesn't matter if the resources you need are in a different container. The fabricator will pull it through the whole chain and craft the items.
Next is the fabrication modules. This part's a little tricky. This is a modular system that produces each component and also supplies the next component in the manufacturing process. You will want to feed each of the crafted components into the other fabricators to use them, passing through its own warehouse storage for the ability to pick up lower tier manufactured components in case you need some parts to craft or build with. This is a guide for the complete system. Pause the video here to copy the layout and connections. The crafting area is one of the most simple parts of this build as buildings are not currently necessary. Here you will place down your workbenches and research lab. This is also a great place to put down a storage chest to put any contraband that you may have picked up along the way that you wouldn't want to take into a settled system. Here is a list of the best order to build your 17 outposts. Leviathan 2 Hygens 3 Zeta of a Yukai 1 Fermi 7-A Hygens 2-A Mao 7 Karini 3-A Katydid 3 Sparta 1 Decoran 7-B Vern 1 Schrodinger 2 Proof found in the Narian system. Procyon 3. Alpha Andrasta 3. Charybdis 2. Schrodinger 8 E. And here is a chart showing everything they will provide. The outposts that need organic farms work very similar to extractors of inorganic resources, though you will need to have scanned the life forms on the planet to be able to select the different resources in the farms, with a similar layout to how you select things in fabricators. Just place them down and check what they require to run. For Schrodinger 8-E, the last on the list, and Hygens 2-A, you will only need the basic cargo link that does not require fuel. They can connect to the other outpost in the same system. Just link the output of that cargo link to the same output your extractors are going to in the daisy chain system. Once you have a steady input of materials, you can go back and fully build your main base, upgrade all your extractors and add more to become even more profitable and efficient. But actually, you don't need to do that. Instead, if you upgrade to Planet Habitation 4, you can travel to Venus and place a beacon and a bench and wait 24 hours there. The time dilation converts a Venus day into roughly 100 days in universal time, which the extractors work off of. The resources will pile up. Then, just play some of the game to give the cargo link system time to ship all the materials back to your main hub. Now I'm going to explain a method for grabbing a big chunk of any resource on a planet without having to mine the rocks on the surface a pocket outpost to get a resource you might want that isn't available on the 17 planets. You'll need to carry all these materials. After placing the small setup on the resource you want to stock up on, wait 24 hours, then power the cargo link to ship it back to your main base. Then just move across the planet, the system or the galaxy to place your pocket outpost on other resources you need. If you've found any way to make a more efficient factory, I'd love to hear from you. Just drop a comment and I'll definitely read it. And if you need any help, leave a comment and I'll be sure to reply. Thank you for watching. This took me quite a few hours to compile. So if it helped you, help me out with a like. And I plan on making more useful Starfield content. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button and bell.